It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, The Red Death. to make even for a friend like Kit Cavanaugh, south from the cool rolling hills of the Bar 20 to the Mesa country, from a land marked with place names like Peepsite and Deadwood, to the Alkali Desert still carrying the stamp of the Spaniards, to the Arena de la Muerte, the Desert of Death, to Alta Mesa and to the Rio Andiendo, the mysterious stream which suddenly vanishes underneath the ground. Well, California. Well, Hoppy. That's it ahead. That's what ahead. The Rio Andiendo. The uh? The disappearing river. It drops under the ground right there and never shows up again. Concern nasty ever, considering the country to the south. 120 miles of the gold blameless, dry, buzzard infested stretch of desert beside of Hades. <laughs> How do you feel? Sore feet. Sore seat and a powerful thirst. <laughs> Well, we'll be down at Kit's ranch in a day or two. If we ain't buzzard bait by then, uh, which way you reckon we're going to push them cattle of his? Right up through the desert past here. I knew it, I knew it. It's times like this when I know that I should have retired ten years ago. If I'd had the brains of a jackass, <laughs> I... <laughs> now, don't underrate yourself. You're smarter than any jackass I ever knew. <laughs> There's a nice run. And it won't be much of a trick pushing 500 head up the arena. All right, Hoppy. Just do me one favor. You ride back in the dragon, keep an eye out for straggling doggies. If you see one flatten its face in that alkali dust, just handle it gentle. Of course, it will be me. <laughs> ah, come on. Let's get down to the stream and fill up our canteen. It'll be dark in a few minutes. We can cool off down there and hit the desert after sundown. What's that? Shots over there. Come on. No use, California. He's gone. Did you get a look at his horse? Ah, uh, too dark. Oh, that critter was fast as a streak. Hey, uh, what you picking up there in the trail? Oh, nothing. Where'd the shots come from? Down there by the stream. Come on, let's take a look. Uh, probably someone fighting at a jackrabbit. Yeah? Then why do you ride off like a posse with that thing? Oh, that's a good question. Wait, hold it. Huh? Look. Leaning against that rock over there. Next to the water. You're right. It weren't a jackrabbit. Come on. Well, I'll be... Hoppy. A man. Yeah, but look at him. Red. He's red as a beet. His clothes, his face. Everything. Yeah. And he's not only red. He's dead. Two days now since the shots and the fleeing horsemen led Hoppy and California to their amazing discovery at the edge of the Rio Andiendo, the body of a man colored a brilliant red from head to foot. Meanwhile, at the ranch house of Kid Cavanaugh... You know something, Kid? I don't think you're being very smart. Why not? Well, you'll never get anywhere with this outfit. You know that. Well, I'm driving 500 ahead north in a couple of days, Cantrell. That's nothing to sneeze at. Besides, there's something else. What's that? You haven't told me why you want to buy me out. What do you mean? I just finished telling you. Even if you are short of water, you've got some good grazing here. With my water, I can build this up to a thousand head. Besides, I 
need the right of way. Now, look, I've only been here a couple of years, but I think I know what's going on around here. A dozen ranches in one miserable town all squeezing out every drop of water there is. This country won't support one more beef critter than is here already. So don't you tell me you could put 500 head more on this place if you bought it. I offered you a fair price, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, too fair. If you'd made it a couple thousand less, I might have thought you were on the square. Okay, kid. For now. For now? Yeah. Never can tell. Something might happen to change your mind. What? Kid. What is it, Martha? I don't know. Something's wrong. Huh? The cattle out by the corral. They act like they're sick or something. Sick? You see what I mean, kid? No. No, I don't. Well, just think it over, will you? Uh, by the way, your friend Cassidy's in town. I just saw him heading for the sheriff's office. <laughs> Now, take it easy, gents. If you think I'm going to swallow a crazy yarn about a blood-red corpse... But you... that's just what it was, Sheriff. We done buried him there, right by the river. Marked the grave with a heap of rocks. Red? His clothes, his hands, his face, everything. We'd have packed him down here, but we were loaded up already, and with a hundred miles of desert to cross... Yeah, but red. A dead man that's red ain't he... What's that, Sheriff? Oh, oh, this here's Doc Galloway. I sent for him when you told me about this. Hello, Hoppy. Howdy, Doc. Doc, what'd you say if I told you these jets run across a red corpse? Red? Yeah. Where? Rio Andiendo, right where she disappears. Near the water? Uh, that's right. It it can't be. The Red Death. The what? The Red Death. It swept through this section years ago. Sort of a legend now, but it does have a basis of truth. What are you talking about? The springs, the water holes all through here suddenly turned red, became poisonous. Killed humans, horses, everything. Like the plague. Probably a bacteria, some kind of germ that suddenly increased beyond all reason and... Oh, this wasn't anything like that, Doc. This man died from something else entirely. Forty-four either. Sudden concentration of lead in the Sacri Iliad. He was shot. We got a glimpse of the killer as he rode off. Well, I'll send a deputy up after the corpus delecti and maybe we'll know more about this red business. Reckon we'll be able to find a grave if you marked it, like you say. Poppy. Kid, how are you, boy? Well, I'm okay, I hope, California. Kid? Well, you don't know how glad I am you're here. Well, I'll be... Uh, no, no, wait a minute, Doc. I want to see you, too. I want you to come out to my ranch, if you can. What's wrong? I don't know. A bunch of my cattle suddenly took sick like they were poisoned or something. Poisoned? Yeah. And a funny thing, that spring of mine, the water's running red. What do you make of it, Doc? I don't know, kid. I... Come on, Doc. Tell me. Please, Doc. Well, I'm afraid they are poison. Oh, I knew it. I knew Martha, it. Martha, please. I, I can't help it, kid. It almost seems like something's working against me. Look, dear, it's not going to help oh, I any... I know it. I, I guess I'm just a coward or a quitter or something. It's just that it's happened this way every time. We build a lot of hope. We start out telling ourselves that this time we'll lick Martha. it. Martha. What's the world got against us, kid? Martha, you don't know how you're making me feel. <laughs> Not your fault, Doc. I sold you this ranch. You couldn't know about that. I know that, but... Look, let me do this, will you? What? I'm all alone. I have no family. I've got plenty to get by on. What if... What if we just forget there ever was a deal? You mean you'd... Doc. Let me test the water first. We'll make sure before we go any further. If it's what I think it is, I'm willing to call it off. You know the old saying, satisfaction guaranteed or your money back? I don't know what to say, Doc. Well, then don't say it. I'll say this much. I don't do business that way. If I took on a load of poison water with this ranch... I'm stuck with it. Kit. I'm sorry, Martha. Here comes Cantrell. Yeah. Brace yourselves, everyone. What's the verdict, Doc? Red plate? If it is, you'll know soon enough, Cantrell. Yeah? When it hit this country last time, it took every ranch in the district. Funny thing, Doc. I'm not worried at all. And Kit. Yeah? 
The offer's still good if you want to sell out. Only the price has changed. It goes down $1,000 a day until you make up your mind. Maybe you'd better get out of here, Cantrell. Sure, Doc. But just remember that, kid. $1,000 a day. Hoppy. Yeah? Would it hurt too much for you to wise me up as to the goings on? Uh, where are we headed? Ah, there it is. Sure is. What? The Navajo Saloon. Finest drink emporium in Altamesa. You going in uh, on another Sesperly binge? <laughs> I want to talk to the proprietor. He's an old friend of mine. Hmm, for a teetotaler, you know more bartenders than any man living. Sometimes I got my doubt. Hmm. His name's Eustace. Eustace Culpepper. And if he ran for president, I'd vote for him. Well, here we are. After you, California. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, Bill Cassidy. Eustace. Bill. Her name's Hopalong, Mr. He knew me when my name was Bill California. Uh, California Carlson, meet Eustace Culpepper. Howdy. Hi. I'll be with you in a shake, Bill. Sure, go ahead. Uh, now, Fred, what, what... Sit down, California. Oh, uh, excuse me, stranger. Not at all. Hoppy, what's this got to do with them pies and steers? Shh, not here. Um, uh, you new in town, stranger? Just coming through. My name's Cassidy. This is California Carlson. I'm Mike Reardon. Howdy. Uh, just passing through, you say? That's right. You, uh, you in the cattle business, Reardon? Nope. I see. Uh, quiet in here, ain't I like it quiet. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> now, Bill, or hop along it is now, huh? <laughs> it was Bill when I knew him up north. Now, nah, Eustace. Oh, them were the days, eh, hop along? Let me tell you, he was a tiger at a church social. <laughs> <laughs> Eustace ran the drugstore up north when I was a kid. Well, is that so? <laughs> Look, Eustace, hey, maybe you and me could... Oh, just... no, you don't, California. Uh, tell me, Eustace, what did you do with your equipment when you gave up the drugstore and took the bartending? Oh, still got her. Stashed away in the barn out back. You remember anything about the drug business? Sure do. No, I went into patent medicine for a while. Put out the slickest concoction you ever laid a tonsil on. Mm. Tasted wonderful. Wouldn't cure nothing, but I sold gallons of it. <laughs> uh, you're just the fellow I'm looking for. Uh, California, you sit here with Mr. Reardon while Eustace and I take a trip out to the barn. Just let her set till she clears up. You sure you're right? Why not? Well, you haven't run a test like this for 30 years. The equipment's rusty, but I ain't. I hope not. This is pretty important. Where'd you get this? Down to Kit Cavanaugh's spring. His stock turned up sick this morning. What makes you think it was... Uh... I don't think anything yet. That's why I got you to drag out this equipment. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, ain't it? That pink color. Yeah. How's it look now? Well, might be able to... Yeah. Hold the lantern up so I can look through it. There you are. Yeah. Hmm. What about it? You're right about that water bill. What's in it? Arsenic. Hmm. That answer your question? Uh, that answers the little one. What's the big one? What's a dead man colored red from top to toe sitting by a stream 120 miles from here? Got to do with a batch of sick cows on Kit Cavanaugh's ranch. Well, now, that's, uh, that's quite a question. Indeed it is, Eustace. Indeed it is. It's late in the evening, and Hoppy in California returned from Alta Mesa to Kit Cavanaugh's ranch at the edge of the desert. 
Poppy. Yeah, kid? Do me a favor, will you? Stop pacing the floor. Checking the motion. I'm getting nervous. Oh, I'm sorry. This thing is beginning to get me. It's simple enough. I bought myself a spring full of poison water. It's not that simple. Why not? This isn't the first arsenic well around here. I bet it's the first one turned arsenic overnight. No, there's more to it than that. Cantrell's still willing to buy. You sell to him and I'll break your neck. You're a little late. Huh? You mean you... No, no, I didn't sign anything, not yet. But every day I wait cost me a thousand dollars. What did you tell him? Said I'd be willing to talk business in the morning. Now, wait a minute. You listen to me, kid. I'm through listening to anyone. Whose ranch is it, yours? Who's gone broke if the cattle die? You? Kid. Oh, I... Sorry, Hoppy. I guess, guess I'm falling to pieces, what with Martha and all to think about. Sure, I know. But there's something more to it. Something none of us know about. Look, the ranch goes sour. Spring runs poison. Ed, look at Cantrell, willing to buy. And at a pretty good price, too. And Doc ready to give you back your money and take title for the spread. Does that make sense? No. I can't help feeling all of us has got something to do with that dead man we found up north. Oh, but doggone, Hoppy. How can that happen? I don't know. Call it a hunch if you want. Everybody's getting jumpy around here. Now, take that deadhead feller we sat with back at Eustace Culpepper Saloon. What was that, California? Uh, that feller we sat with. What did you call him? Deadhead. Why deadhead? Oh, uh, well, that's about the only thing he'd tell me. He'd done all his business or nothing, but... When I asked him how he got to Altamacha, he said something about he deadheaded in on the stage. You're sure he said that? Yeah, but what... Uh, That's what the... it. I knew there was a connection between that man at Disappearing River and this thing here. What do you think? I'm going down to the hotel. He's probably staying there. I want to talk to that bird right now. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Riordan just checked out, and I don't know where he went. Could he leave town? I run the hotel here, not the transportation business. Now, I don't mind telling you I'm busy. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Henry? Yeah, Eustace? Never get up to heaven that way, Henry. Uh, what is it, Eustace? Oh, uh, Henry's straying a mite from the gospel. He knows he hustled Mr. Reardon out the back door of this flea bag not a half hour ago. Eustace, show him. Henry, I've seen it with my own eyes. He rode off toward Lazy Sea Ranch with Steve Cantrell. Thanks, Eustace. Eustace, got yes, pepper. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, you never busted your work to Cantrell, Henry. I mean, for that five dollars he slipped you to shut up. Wait. After all, twas me that told Cassidy. <laughs> I don't like this, Cantrell. I'm not used to being shanghai No bad feelings, Redden. Just want a little private talk, that's all. I know why you're here, and I think I can help you. Well, that is, if you play along with me. Go on, Cantrell. I can deliver what you want tomorrow morning. At a price, of course. There's only one thing. What's that? When are you planning to make this thing public? Tomorrow. I'm going to call a meeting of the cattlemen. Suppose you were to hold off till I get this little thing of mine straightened out. Can't do that. I'm afraid you'll have to. What kind of a remark is that, Cantrell? Call it a threat if you want to. You're riding up to my ranch tonight, and you're going to stay there until the... Wait a minute. Go on, Cantrell. I'm interested, too. Cassidy. Go ahead. Reach for your gun. Okay. Oh. Better trot home to the Lazy Sea and soak your hand. We'll be seeing you at the cattleman's meeting tomorrow, Cantrell. Maybe sooner than that, Cassidy. The man talks tough. Ah, you'll get over it. Now, what about you? All right, what about me? Don't you think you'd better tell me why you're here? Sure. At the meeting tomorrow night. <laughs> ah, you already gave yourself away, Reardon. When you told my partner you deadheaded into Alta Mesa on the stagecoach. Only a railroad man would say that. All right, so I'm a railroad man. And the only reason I can see for a railroad man to be in Alta Mesa right now is to lay out the location for a railroad across the arena at De La Muerte. To maybe link up with the line on the West End. You're a pretty good guesser. I try to be. So when you start thinking railroad, you automatically start looking around for something Alta Mesa hasn't got. In quantity, at least. Water. That's right. Okay, Cassidy, you win. It is a railroad and it is water. 
We sent a man here weeks ago to look the place over, and last we heard from him, he said he'd worked out a brilliant idea to find it for us. Then what? Nothing. He dropped out of sight. I think I know where you'll find him. Yeah? In the back room of the sheriff's office, stretched out on a table, covered from head to foot with red dye and pretty dead. You mean... Yeah. Cal and I, California and I found him two nights ago, 120 miles north of here, at the edge of the Rio and Dendio. You know, Ridden, that's something else we ought to take up at the cattlemen's meeting. <laughs> Hiya, Doc. Good to see you. All right. May I have your attention, please? You've already been told that the railroad I represent is planning a line across the Arena del Muerte to link up with the other side. I don't need to go into what that'll mean to this section. Here at the edge of the desert, a town will spring up that'll grow into one of the big cattle shipping centers of the southwest. But all of our thinking up to now has run up against a stone wall. The one thing that keeps this section down, the thing that limits the number of cattle you can raise, the thing that keeps this town down to a crossroads, is water. That's right. We just didn't look the box. Every drop of water available here now is being used. We'll need a hundred times as much if we're to think about running the railroad through here or building the town to go with it. Now, how are you going to do with that? Get water where there ain't none. Now, let me draw a diagram on the blackboard here. Here's a triangle. At the point of it, at the top, is the spot where the Rio Andiendo disappears into the earth, 120 miles north of here. Well, what good's that to an us? If we could tap that river under the ground, We'd have all the water we need and more besides. Come, come. What do you think of that? Now, along the bottom line of the triangle is the Alta Mesa country right here with its dozen or so ranches, all existing on the seats that come to the surface. The engineer we sent here a few weeks ago figured one of those seats might connect with the river itself under the desert. If we could find which one, it would be simple to develop it to drill down and tap the main stream. But which one of the seats? Well, there's a whopping out of them. So our engineer figured out a simple plan. He rode north to the point where the river disappears and poured red dye into it for three days. Sure enough, day before yesterday, the spring at one of the ranches here ran red. The Kit Cavanaugh Ranch out at the edge of the mesa. Kit. But, honey, our, our ranch. Oh, Kit. Mr. Cavanaugh now holds the development of this section in his hands. And I hope we'll be able to work with him in following it through. Just a minute, please. Just a minute. There's one thing more. Mr. Reardon left it to me to mention that the railroad engineer isn't with us tonight to see how his plan succeeded. Because someone, someone in this room, who had an eye on the money that water'd bring here, murdered the engineer and left his body up there by the Rio Andiendo. I think we can find out who that is. His horse dropped the shoe on the trail up there right after the killing. He rode him over 120 miles of desert trail on a bare hoof. The left hind one. Everyone will keep his seat while my partner checks the horses at the tie rack outside. If the horse isn't there, we'll all stay right here while the ranchers are searched till we find him. <coughs> <clears throat> Let me out of here, Hey, hey he's got a gun. What down that gun, you? Doc. Doc Galloway. Gosh, Hoppy, I don't know how to thank you for all your... <laughs> oh, forget it, kid. Let's think about those cattle we're going to start north tomorrow. Bro. Oh, let's not. <laughs> Doggone it, Hoppy. You sure pulled the rabbit out of the hat with that horseshoe. I was wondering what you picked up back there at the Rio. Yeah? You know, seeing old Eustace Culpepper reminded me of something I learned when I was a kid and my mother made me go to Sunday school. Something in the Bible that says, The guilty flee when no man pursueth. How come? Well, you saw that horseshoe, didn't you, California? No. Why? Ha, 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 ha. That thing I picked up on the trail had been there since 49. And besides, 
It never belonged to a horse anyway. It belonged to a mule. <laughs> Up here in California, hitting the trail homeward again. And after this little adventure, the Bar 20 is going to be a welcome sight. Hope you enjoyed this friendly visit and that you'll remember to tune in next time these two fighting cowboys get involved in another thrilling escapade. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Red Death was written by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>